Hello and welcome everyone to City Skylines to the Aurelia City. Today we have a very important thing to do. We will complete the entire one half of the city today. Aurelia is divided in half by the river and the part with the airport, all the industry and suburbs, that's exactly the half that will be completed today. We will do that by filling the empty space next to the greenhouse farming from last time. We will build a big plaza with a light rail station. We will do some landscaping and finish the waterfront. So let's go. And this is something that we could have seen in the previous episode because I was building this main avenue just to really connect it to have some traffic go into the new, newly built areas. And the same thing with the light rail. I really needed to connect the light rail so I can finally have it go uh, into its terminus basically on the, on the side of the industrial zone. Okay. Now these tracks and the road, how it was positioned, it was like a temporary thing and I needed to just do it slightly differently. I never wanted to have this light rail go on like a very long distance on this main avenue because it's not exactly looking all that great. It's a light rail after all, it should have its own path through the area which is just going to be disconnected from everything else apart from the stations of course so that it can go really really fast. Now this intersection in here this is this is actually a very satisfying piece of the project. So it's basically the place where the light rail just diverges from the main avenue. I'm obviously using these cans of roads from the workshop. I'm also using the road from the vanilla plus pack which is basically the four lane uh, medium road uh, but it doesn't have the parking. Now in here I'm probably going to get a couple of comments because I al already did on the on the live stream uh, why am I putting the the ploppable asphalt in the intersection I can just use the node controller to get rid of the markings uh, you cannot do that for that road because if you do then it's just going to leave some mangled textures underneath so it's uh, it's better to just do it this way now we are going to take a look at detailing this intersection because this was actually something super satisfying to do now I really do like doing these especially if you have like a big intersection like the node itself between the crosswalks is like very big but you don't really have the traffic uh, going into like a large area right that's exactly the situation because we are connecting into a road that has a very wide median so I'm trying to uh, extend this median and make some kind of grass patches here and there so that the traffic lines are actually going to be uh, nicely enclosed by all these curbs and the grass uh, inside of it. I'm kind of thinking that it also adds to the overall uh, openness of this area. It's not going to look that asphalt heavy let's say and you know it's grass it's green it's just going to look nice uh, this way and uh, I just really like the level of customization that you can do with uh, the intersection marking tools of course and the node controller and everything else so yeah this, this was a just, a, just a no brainer really to do this kind of detailing in these kinds of areas and of course I also set up the priority lights for the trams or for the light rail trains in here so that when they are going to approach the intersection the cars will just immediately get a red light. I was kind of fiddling with this a bit because I had some issues with uh, the vehicles not exactly following the lights because they were uh, you know I'm using the advanced vehicle options mod and uh, especially the trams and the light rails they uh, they are set so that uh, they have very low values for braking and accelerating because that's going to make it a bit more realistic. But I also had that for some of the vehicles that I recently downloaded from the workshop. And this basically means that the vehicle won't be able to brake before a red light. So in City Skylines, when a vehicle is not able to do that because the segment is just way too short, it basically can't see the braking until it's too late, then it's just going to decide whatever, I'm just going to go through. So that was a bit... That was a bit unfortunate and I was really fiddling a lot with that uh, connection. I had to make the segments uh, as long as they were needed really so that the braking is going to be is going to be possible for not just the cars but also for the trains, the light rail. Obviously the fact that there is the stop in here kind of helps because when the light rail is uh, accelerating from the station it's uh, not going to reach full speed before it uh, reaches the actual intersection. Okay. Now we are going to finally go and build the plaza and as you can see I have this very special building right in the center of it. 
Now, this is something that I got uh, quite recently from the workshop. It's the United States Air Force Academy Chapel. And it's really hard to believe it, but uh, it was apparently built in 1962. But uh, even, even despite that, I decided to use it in Aurelia because it just looks absolutely amazing. It just looks like out of this world. It's, uh, it's really modern and it just uh, looks very distinct and uh, I just really wanted to have it in Aurelia at uh, some place. Now, I'm not really sure what exactly it would be in Aurelia. It might as well be some kind of uh, chapel, why not? And uh, in that case, it kind of needs to be placed somewhere a bit more open. It definitely should not be placed in like blocks of buildings or something because it just looks so unique. So putting it in its own plaza definitely felt like a good idea. So yeah, that's going to be right there in the center. Now, as any plaza in the in the in the game, basically, if you are trying to create like a bigger plaza, you should probably put some different surface on it, not just uh, the pavement. Gravel might work if you have like a special gravel texture, but it's usually better to do it with decals. Now, I'm obviously using the decals so that they can be converted into procedural objects and uh, that's going to put them on the on the main level of the entire thing and then i of course need to do some kind of uh, clipping or just need to cut the textures when they are touching the roads the rails and you know the edges i did the edges of the plaza with network curbs that i also made slightly wider i think two times wider uh, using the node controller so that i can just uh, hide the decals uh, underneath them a bit better now, I'm using these kinds of tiles, and I was using them uh, before in the center of the city on a much smaller scale, and in there it was much easier because these, these obviously are kind of repetitive, like the pattern of the tiles is kind of repetitive. There are, I think, four kinds of these, and you can obviously, each one you can just rotate 90 degrees, so you basically have uh, 16 different... Uh, patterns, let's call it, right? So what I was doing there is that I just made the entire square or the entire plaza with just the one kind, rotate it one direction, and then I prepared like a palette of these different tiles oriented differently as well, and I copy pasted it with move it. And in move it, we have, or sorry, not move it, procedural objects. There is that function in procedural objects these days where you can just click a procedural object and replace it with some else, some, some kind of different procedural object. So it's going to put that uh, copy in its position. And obviously if they are the same size, then it's just going to be uh, perfectly matched to the rest of them. So I was kind of just clicking randomly some different tiles on the entire plaza and replacing them with different copies. Now, uh, it, it was kind of a difficult thing to do and I definitely didn't do it perfectly. But uh, what I thought at the time is that I probably just need to start doing this detailing on the plaza because that's going to break the space anyway. And uh, uh, it might even break the patterns a bit because right now you can still see that uh, they are a bit repetitive the patterns here and there and uh, it's just not looking all that great but as soon as we start adding more and more stuff more and more chaos really on the open surface then that's going to look just much much better especially with some kind of uh, planters or decorations and everything so so that's eventually going to be fine and I really wanted to do the edges of the plaza not exactly straight but kind of natural because yeah there is that landscaping over there with uh, with the rocks i really like doing these rocks and uh, and the trees of course so that it's going to continue those terrain features that we already kind of highlighted in the previous project previous build now this episode also sees us finish that pedestrian highway right now it's 100 percent done all the way from the airport to that place that we did, uh, what was that, two episodes of Aurelia back, right? So right now this pedestrian highway is super long and people can just use it to move around the city. Now this pedestrian highway, just like with the previous project, is going to divide this area in two different places that are going to be uh, quite different from each other. So on one hand, we have the uh, the plaza. Obviously, that's going to be like a high density area with buildings all around. And uh, on the other side, closer to that, uh, 
artificial lake, let's say, there is going to be some kind of a low density place. At first I wanted to build it a bit more complicated, detailed and everything, but eventually I just decided to really quickly build it because it was apparent, actually this episode was supposed to be about that uh, low density area that I'm about to build, but uh, then I started building this plaza on the live stream because I downloaded the chapel building and it was clear that it's gonna be the plaza that's gonna be the main focus of this place. So I eventually decided to do that low density area really quickly with just the green cities buildings which has some nice pattern of the streets between them and just cover the rest of the open spaces with uh, lots of trees and be done with it. So that's what I'm gonna do in just a couple of minutes in the time lapse. Now I really wanted though to do some kind of uh, element here like a design element let's say geometrical element that's going to connect these places the, the low density place the suburb and the plaza. So I used the chapel, I just used a couple of instances, I placed it in a line, basically used it as a ruler to position that roundabout which is in the center, which is going to be in the center of that of that uh, low density area so that it aims perfectly at it. Now inside that roundabout there is going to be the tram station which is going from that greenhouse farming area from the harbor and then continues all the way to the airport. But I actually in this episode I did already put it all the way to the airport this line which uh, uses the more distinct uh, rail whale vehicles not the Alstom uh, the washing machine trams right now what I wanted to say oh yeah so that I also created these uh, paths that are going from the plaza to the roundabout and they are slightly you know distorted like this they're not straight because like I said I don't really I don't really want to do like straight shapes in this area I don't think it's going to look very nice because it's uh, right next to all this nature, all this nature, natural detailing, okay? So I eventually thought that it might be a good idea to also incorporate the pedestrian path into the plaza. So at first I had it elevated, there was supposed to be a bridge and some kind of uh, some kind of ramps really going into the pedestrian highway from the plaza. But then it, it occurred to me that, uh, well, why do it that way, you know? It's much better to just put it on the same level. It's going to make the pedestrian highway a bit steeper. I suppose that if it was like a road, it probably would be too steep for a road, but, you know, it's just for pedestrians. So they're going to be just fine. Cyclists might struggle a bit there, but, you know, still it's going to be more than okay. So yeah, it uh, just forms a nice transition into that low density area and there is also that road in the center which, uh, or there are those uh, red paths that are nicely just continuing the shape of the chapel area, the chapel itself probably as well, and it's just looking good. If you are standing in that low density area on the roundabout that I built, if you got off the tram for example, then you can just uh, see the chapel right in front of you. So that's supposed to be like a really, really nice uh, sight. Anyway, now we are going to move back to the plaza and we are actually going to extend the plaza a lot more because we are going to make the second level or the level below it. Because the light rail, it kind of divides the plaza area in two. Again, it divides it between the low and the high side. Now, this low side, it's, uh, it's the one closer to the river, of course. Now that's going to have uh, that's going to have these buildings around it. Again, I downloaded these buildings for the sole purpose of creating these lines because uh, usually I was using either the shops, you know, back when I, we were doing the um, the transfer station, for example, near that new bridge, the Red Arch Bridge. We were doing the shopping buildings, the commercial buildings for these uh, like circular lines in here and uh, somewhere else in the downtown I was just using those brick offices but I'm kind of using that all the time so why not just do something different. So I had to cut these buildings in half basically because they were too tall which means I had to convert them into procedural object and then I also used that uh, circle which is I think the playground uh, surface which is very conveniently used for these purposes because it has a very high ver vertex count and that means that if you scale it up it's not going to be that distorted compared to for example that blank procedural object circle which only has a couple of vertices and uh, scaled up it's very visible that it's just not a uh, very very high vertex count right so this is much better because it's going to keep that circular shape 
and I use that as a template to move these buildings around and create this nice shape and obviously we are going to fill those roofs so it's not going to look this terrible but I'm obviously just using these buildings to only get from them the uh, the front faces some of these buildings have doors in front so I was kind of combining different uh, different kinds of buildings you could have actually seen me there in the time lapse uh, convert uh, or cut in half uh, two instances of this building because one of them had the doors okay so I suppose that this is just some kind of a, like a shopping arcade or something like that okay now we are going to do the surface on top of the roof because right now it obviously looks absolutely terrible and uh, we need to do the borders so I'm just using the concrete wall over here copying it multiple times aligning it carefully to the exact position of the of the procedural object building there is there is that nice new features or it's probably not that new these days of aligning even the rotations with procedural objects different ones so this is actually quite convenient and a fast process now for this level it's not really a, another level it's just a different uh, place of the plaza or different segment of the plaza I'm just going to use the gravel because we also have it underneath the tracks so why not continue it over here and this is just going to be a small part it's going to be like a viewing platform maybe you can just get off the light rail in here and just uh, stand on the edges there and just overlook the city because again we are on the opposite side on the river opposite of the uh, of the a sports area of the stadiums and everything and there is also that construction site which is obviously later going to in Aurelia turn into some kind of a some kind of a nice uh, it's like nice buildings that are going to be nice to look at right obviously not in the series the construction site is going to keep uh, being a construction site but you know if this was real life then obviously at some point it would be finished yeah, so I definitely needed to use the gravel surface there because it also breaks uh, these uh, these tiles because I don't want to use them absolutely everywhere. But down here on this uh, lower level, I definitely did want to use them also because of some continuity between uh, the areas and it's just going to look much better. Now, obviously, we are going to break the space into more into more areas because we are going to put some planters here and there, the fountain. I finally decided to just do it twice. Uh, once uh, near the chapel and down here near this uh, office building or commercial building I'm not really sure what this might be or some kind of a, some kind of a, like a government office doesn't really matter it's just a nice building that I really wanted to place here and overall it's creating this uh, I'm not really sure like a like an angled teardrop shape with the building on the side so that that's kind of nice and uh, this was something that I was a bit afraid that it's not gonna be noticeable that much but I'm also trying to position these planters these edges of the planters so that they are going to aim nicely towards the shape of that intersection in front of them so it's going to look like if you are just walking towards the building along the waterfront it's going to look like when you're standing on the intersection as if there was like a like a central alley that was aiming towards the main entrance of this of this big building right so that's just going to look like optically or geometrically quite interesting now it's time to finally do some kind of detailing down here so these planters I'm usually doing them because uh, I mean I'm doing this technique when I'm just using network curbs they are called curbs and uh, filling it with procedural object grass but they don't exactly share the same uh, tone of the color so I really need to heavily uh, cover that with all kinds of trees and that's you know nothing nothing bad in this particular case because these planters are here to break the surfaces so they should be heavily detailed anyway so that's what I'm doing now the edges uh, over here on the top I'm just going to cover with these networks and gonna do some uh, nice and colorful uh, flowers because that's just going to add more colors into the area and overall it's just going to look nice so why not now also I did these uh, pedestrian access points uh, so that uh, people from the lower part of the plaza they can easily go into that uh, little tunnel for pedestrians and they can just uh, use those uh, stairs or elevators that I'm going to be building right here to reach the upper part of the plaza and they have two points of entrance in here so that they can even go under the tracks if they really wanted to I suppose that and I'm actually going to make that later that uh, people can cross the light rail tracks but you know if they don't want to they don't need to 
I'm uh, converting some of these roofs into procedural objects just because I can repaint them. I still have some issues with the with the prop painter mod or whatever it's called. So I'd rather just uh, do it like this with the procedural objects. Uh, also putting some sculptures in here, some kind of statues, really just to put something more interesting into the plaza and also kind of recoloring it so that it's going to be looking a bit better. But those are buildings so I can recolor them using the repaint mod it's called i'm not exactly sure these days but yeah something something like that so it's going to stay repainted even after next map load now i'm trying to position some kind of trees on the side of the chapel i was actually redoing this a couple of times because i wasn't sure about the heights of the trees in this area but eventually it turned out looking okay i really wanted to put something slightly higher there because the chapel already is kind of towering over the entire area. It is higher actually, even compared to the office buildings around it. So it should also be having some kind of slightly taller trees. Obviously not super tall, not taller than the building itself, but some kind of nicer, more distinct trees there. So it's going to look, um, it's just going to emphasize uh, the, uh, the geometry of the entire place, I suppose, even the verticality of the area. Now, the most important thing for all plazas, and that is obviously to connect all the pedestrian connections wherever we can. So, I'm not only creating the paths so that people can use the light rail station, but I'm also creating a lot of, let's say, dummy paths where people are not exactly required to walk to, but uh, people kind of will in the game because the pedestrian paths, they have some, I guess, probabilities that people will use and uh, they are usually going to use even the ones that are slightly less convenient. So I'm just trying to place all of these pedestrian paths everywhere we have some open space. I'm even putting them into multiple points, into at multiple points into that office building so that uh, people can just uh, appear as if they are walking through the office building and using it fully, right? So that's going to look very, very good because people are going to be using those paths quite a lot, which is, you know, common for these kinds of projects in Aurelia. Now I have to apologize, I did not record fully the creation of this low density area. This is obviously the one that I was talking about right next to the plaza. And uh, I just really wanted to fill it with lots of these uh, green cities, uh, echo buildings or something. I'm not really sure exactly what they're called, but uh, they are just very good for these purposes. And if you're following the series, you know I've been using them uh, quite a lot of times already. So the place is nothing really special. I was just uh, trying to get it done and fill that area and uh, just have something there that's going to nicely complement the entire area because at the end it's just a transition. Uh, it's just a transition between basically the industry then there are these ridges with the trees to block the noise and pollution and everything. And it's just going into those medium density suburbs and eventually into the high density stuff closer to the center. So it's just a nice transition. Now, since I put that, uh, that uh, pedestrian highway lower on the level of the plaza, I also upgraded the shapes of these paths when they are connecting and uh, also added some more of those tiles on the sides because there is like a nice continuity there between the surfaces uh, over that uh, pedestrian highway. It doesn't really look like the pedestrian highway is fully cutting through it. Now we are going to move into a slightly different place in the city. As you can see, we are moving to that uh, place near the university. This is an area that I eventually decided to just cover with a lot of landscaping because this place needs to be done before we can do the tram line ride of this particular line that you can see right here. The line is actually not going to be, or the ride is not going to be the next episode. It's not going to be episode 95 because I still need to return to the downtown and do some kind of different stuff there. But episode 96 is going to be the tram ride in Aurelia. So stay tuned for that. Now, like I said, before we can do that, though, we need to finish these places. Now, this place at first was supposed to be some kind of a larger public transport hub, but I eventually decided that the light rail is going to go through the university and the, uh, the line from the, from the island city is just going to kind of cross the light rail over here. And it's not really going to connect to the tram at all on this piece of land. It's going to connect to the tram on that, uh, on that university island, let's call it. 
and uh, near the old part of the university and this place kind of lost its purpose so I eventually decided because this is the edge of the city anyway so I'm just going to do some landscaping I'm going to do lots of rocks in here with uh, decals and trees and that's actually going to look really really nice so that's exactly what I'm doing in here nothing all that super special but it is going to wrap up this part of the map which was kind of needed I wasn't really sure where to to really put this part but this this episode was just, you know, it felt appropriate because we are already wrapping up the opposite side of the city with this episode, so why not just uh, also put uh, this uh, part of the wrapping up in here as well. So I had to cut away some of the paths, so some of the roads that are coming from that smaller dam that's holding the upper lake, of course, and I also uh, provided like a little extension of that pedestrian path that is actually going across the dam and into the university area. So that's going to be an extension of the pedestrian connections that are running all the way from those suburbs, from that little disconnected uh, residential development area that we did a long time ago. Anyway, this is the finished thing. Unfortunately, I don't have the before shot for this one, but this will have to suffice. So, as you can see, we have the entire waterfront finished and, well, everything is finished on this side of the river. So, that's on its own like a very nice achievement in Aurelia. But obviously, it's not just that, but it's also the plaza that we did and I really do like it. The light rail is nicely working together with this place. The station is nicely busy because people are trying to use this light rail station even from that uh, low density area that we did there. It's basically like a transfer place between the tram and the light rail, similarly to that industrial zone area that we did a couple of episodes back. And uh, even from this uh, offices, uh, from this office building and all the rest of the offices on the waterfront, people are just using it. Uh, when I was doing the recording, people are already coming into this place uh, quite a lot. But even when I was finished, people were still more and more crowds of people appeared on, on this plaza. So that was very, very satisfying. But you can already see a lot of people using this place. And speaking of a lot of people using this place, uh, the pedestrian highway is super busy, which is really good thing to see because I was afraid that people are just not going to use it at all, but they are. And that's a nice thing to see really because uh, people are even using the pedestrian highway to just move on like really long distances. They're not really doing that on the streets, but on the pedestrian highway, they are doing that. And that's, that's just, that's just really good. That's really satisfying to, to see that people in the game are actually using your creations, how you kind of planned it, right? So yeah, that's just, that's just always great. This is the shot of the uh, of the places that we finished in the recent episodes. Oh yeah, and you can see the stadiums there on the right, how they're going to be nicely visible from this plaza. So this gives you like an overall idea what you might expect to see in the distance if you were just uh, walking around this place or using the public transport or just something like that. And I suppose that even the chapel itself has a nice uh, view because it has those big windows at the front and at the back. So at the back uh, you are looking into that low density area but that's mostly covered with lots of trees. So you just see lots of trees in front of you and just nature. And on the other side, there is exactly the opposite thing. You are looking into like the high density of the city. So that's a nice contrast overall. This is the shot of the overall area of this side of the city. And there is nothing more satisfying than just seeing this place done. It's, it's just so great to finally not see any single little spot of on the map which is not done. I mean, I suppose in front of the small dam there are a couple of areas that are that need some kind of tidying up, but uh, don't worry, we're obviously going to do that. Thank you for watching today's episode. If you liked it, you can put a thumbs up underneath it. You can put some comments in the comment section. You can obviously subscribe to the channel if you just found out this channel. And you can also become a channel member if you want to directly support the channel and what I do here. Big thanks to all the channel supporters. I really do appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you again for watching. Take care and goodbye.